those coins getting more interesting. All right, then. I'll steal from you. Oh, I don't want all that stuff. <laughs> Thank you for the money, King. I will be talking to you next time. What's in here? I think I have those. Okay. What? Witcher, a word, if you will. Yeah, I'm here. You go into your tent? <laughs> this is getting really intense, people. Spoiled my day. Bloody hell. Tell I me. have no idea how delighted I am to work in tandem with you. Me too. True, I have no idea. Better <laughs> times approach, Geralt, you shall see. I trust you're not bothered if I refer to you by name. No. Not at all. Wonderful, I feel we shall become great friends. Okay. <laughs> He's weird and i not handleable at all. I'd rather Sile than him, but he's tremendously interesting. Uh, all right. I'm not looking for new friends, Deathmold. Let's get to work. I see. As you seem to be the hero, how might I help you, White Wolf? I didn't mean to tell him that I didn't want to be friends. <laughs> um, not all the specters were aggressive. Did you notice that? I didn't. Did you notice that not all the specters were ah, aggressive? True. Most would disappear when we neared them. I think the curse's power corrupts the ghosts of those who died in the battle, turning them into draugers. Draugers? Is that some professional name you witches have for specters? They're demons, Deathmold. Draugers are demons of war that arise on battlefields where the fighting was vicious and the slaughter particularly bloody. They are hatred and bloodlust in condensed form. The name matters little. Do you know how to rid us of these draugers? A silver sword's enough to send them to their rest. But as long as the curse remains active, new ones will appear. The soldiers' ghosts are the key. If we could reverse the tide of the battle... Ah, okay. Don't delay. Grab your sword and start reversing. I'll need some <laughs> symbols of war that belonged to the soldiers who perished here. Artifacts symbolizing hatred, death, courage, and faith. They have to be magically active and linked to those who died. Without them, I won't be able to summon the ghosts. Well, I've no idea how to find them, apart from which I know little about war symbolism. I'll deal with the artifacts. I have another job for you. Have you dealt with curses before? I've cast a few in my time. One victim sprouted donkey's ears in a tail, another's house burned down. Nothing too serious. Shame. <laughs> Have you removed curses, lifted spells? Never had the chance. But I mastered the theory involved. Best in my class at the Magic Academy. Mm. They don't teach I you bet. about curses like this one at Banard. Glevis's curse is a fourth level blood spell. It's also known as the Archmistress's curse. A misnomer, for they've been cast by generally crazed mages or priests, not necessarily women. You've done your homework. Not necessarily women. Explain this blood curse to me. An ordinary blood curse is a trivial thing. You let a little of your own blood. Best done at midnight, surrounded by lit candles. Sabrina had a whole pyre around her. Tell me about Glevisig's curse. Read about it for yourself. I have all the necessary literature. In fact, you only need the great encyclopedia of curses, spells and prophecies. And a, a volume compiled by Tessard of Rees and Margarita Loantil, Masters of Magic on Curses Selected Writings. All right. Quite a tome. Um... Are you sure Sabrina cast the curse? Positively. Curses of this kind are cast rarely. There have only been six confirmed cases. How many confirmed cases of their being lifted? One. By a team of mages led by Archmistress Francesca Finderbear, whence came the curse's other appellation. In any case, Sabrina Glevesig was part of that team. Hmm? Small world, and one that just got a little uglier. That's not all. The curse that Francesca and Sabrina dealt with was meant to end the lives of the last of the Tyson dynasty, the rulers of Kovir. It was cast by Scarlet Rodelega, a very talented but completely mad man. A prophecy and an activator were also involved. I see. 
Sabrina just stole her curse from this Rodolega. Precisely. Beside which the king himself and a company of armed men witnessed her casting it. <sighs> Why is Henselt still breathing? He killed the priest. Why didn't he burst like a ripe tomato under a dwarf's heel? Perhaps Glevisig wishes Henselt to wait for imminent death. I don't think so. I know a few sorceresses. They're mean, true, but they also want results. Sabrina cast the curse while roasting at the stake. Not the most comfortable circumstances. I suspect she botched something. Are you suggesting Henselt may be safe? I'm suggesting he could be saved, provided we cut him off from the heart of the curse, the Battle of Spectres. It's the weakest link. How could we do that? I don't know yet, but I suspect I could summon Sabrina's ghost and force her to free Henselt. First, I need to learn the circumstances of her death. Mm, okay, so the curse was cast a long time ago, all right? So this, this king was cursed already, but he was living his life just fine. And then another trigger was the priest that he killed right now, basically. If I'm not mistaken, you need blood to cast a blood curse. Precisely. Unachievable otherwise. Sabrina was bound to a wagon True. Wheel. Where did she get enough blood? She put a spell on a soldier who gave her a coup de grace. It was easy. The minds of some soldiers are so uncomplicated. Sabrina needed one of them to strike her, shorten her suffering, but complete the curse. However, this is where she erred. That performed miracles, gathered the power, got the prophecy and activator right, but fell flat on her face on the simplest thing at the end. Don't get so excited. She chose a fool, a bungler. I heard he thrust five times with his spear, yet the witch's soul would not quit her corpse. <laughs> there was no one guarding the pyre? It was one of the guards the sorceress chose for the task. His comrades were irate. He spoiled the show for them. The king was no longer anywhere near. In any case... Blood flowed and the curse took root. Yes, but the got her due. Mm -hmm. We've got our comet and murder. What about the coins? We have those as well. Not enough for you. No. Why do I get the feeling I've stumbled on some shameful secret? A state secret. If you don't tell me, your head of state may soon lose his head. There's a plot afoot within the military. Those involved share a symbol, a square coin adorned with a fish. Let's do this. I shall in no way hinder your investigation, and you will reveal to me anything you learn. Should I happen upon anything related to the curse? You'll let me know. So be it. <laughs> Weird. I'm taking it. You're going to help me, Death Mold. Of course, as the king ordered. Listen up. You'll do the paperwork. I get the feeling you like it. I'll need a number of protective rooms to summon Sabrina's ghost. They need to detain the sorceress's ghost and anything else that enters this world with it. Find something for me in your library. The runes need to be easy to produce. I haven't seen any artists around here. Apart <laughs> from that, the Draugrs are likely to begin their forays in search of Henselt. When they leave the battlefield, they'll grow weaker. Your men should be able to handle them. Just equip them with silver-plated weapons. Henselt could also use something silver to defend himself. Over the entrance to his tent, hang a wreath of song foil and fool's parsley. Inside, a fire fueled by juniper branches must burn at all times. Where will I get so much silver? Melt down your collection of pots for all I care. Just get it. <laughs> Those aren't pots. They're silver vases of Nazia. Last of all, give Henselt an instructional talk. <laughs> Explain that I'll need him. And what will you be doing? Drinking ale and fondling the camp women? There's that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Though I'll also prepare to summon Sabrina's ghost and figure out what I need to send the fighting specters back to the afterlife. I'll drop by and give you more work as I learn about this curse. How did you divine that you might recover your memory by lifting the curse? Um, because raids? Because, uh, what, what, what is his name? Um... Ah, uh, Cedric. Um, someone foretold it. Yeah, probably. How do you know? Why wouldn't he know? Everybody knows that I'm. Amnesiac. Amnesiac. 
Someone foretold it. Well, let's do. Let's try the most in, more interesting one. I don't like people poking around in my life. Learning about others is my job. I must know the secrets of all who wish to approach the king. I've no problem admitting I like the work. My past has nothing to do with Hensolt. You don't know that. Do you know why I have no friends, Witcher? Because sooner or later I learn all their secrets, which is followed by interrogations, torture, executions. Just leave my past alone. Mm. Oh well, this was an interesting talk. Freak. All right, people. So I wanted to see how uh, Desmond reacted to me bringing his friend, and uh, we just shook our hands, <laughs> and then he commented something about um, Geralt having a strong grip and uh, being the kind of man that women like and a warrior and stuff like that. Nothing really doesn't seem to have changed the tone between the two. But I've asked him everything again, um, and now I have to read this book that, that he suggested. But if you click on this again, I guess he will explain it to you without reading. I will do both things. I'm gonna get these books, whatever they are. Uh, wrong one, this one. Can you tell me how a blood curse works? The effects and phenomena generated by a fourth level blood curse require an immense amount of the power. The eclipse, the death of a dynasty, the battle of spectres. No sorcerer, no living being can summon such levels of energy. It's quite simply impossible. But some clever mages discovered how to make possible the impossible. Since then, the world has lived in fear of your curses. Genius. What did you discover? A prophecy that initiates a blood curse is simply a spell that binds the power. It should be cast at a site possessing the appropriate accumulation characteristics. A battlefield is perfect. Blood-soaked ground, defined boundaries, a symbolic dimension. When the caster utters the words of the prophecy, the curse begins to accumulate the power. For the last three years, day after day, month after month, the initiating curse has been gathering the power, drawing it from the elements of fire, earth, air and water. The energy thus accumulated could move the stars. Enter the activator, one of the prophesied events possessing its own symbolic dimension. It releases the accumulated energy for use by the curse proper. Ordinarily, the curse cannot utilize all the built-up power, which must be released in some way, so one gets side effects, like solar eclipses. So I guess this is what we would be reading. And um, yeah, I shook his hand, but I don't think that changes much. I see now, uh, because guys, honestly, I couldn't tell between the two first option which one was the friendly one and i want to be friendly towards this guy i'm not sure if i will remain friendly towards this guy but i'm i'll try so i don't think it changes anything the approach the initial approach you choose with him um because at the end of the day he gave me his uh, little speech about having no friends and torture and stuff like that I'm okay with him though, it is his job, that's true. I mean, I feel like he will always be on Hansel's side. Um, not that I'm criticizing that, it's his sorcerer, so... I would like to stop for a while and read my journal, so I'm gonna cut. And then I'm going to take a rest because I need to think. Welcome back! So, another day for me, uh, same episode for you. So I read all the journal, I took a break from the game, I had lots of things to do, uh, time to think. And what can I say? Yeah, I've read many interesting new things in the journal, N never as many as I want. I still know very little about Nilfgaard and... Uh, I know Spoil very little death. about history Lion. of these wars and stuff, and I'm sometimes very confused. Uh, but where are the books that I was supposed to... Are you giving them to me? We need to talk. What? No, hello. Good morning. Pack her up and kiss my ass. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, Good morning. Well. Good morning, White Wolf. Will you take some tea? It's a fortifying beverage. Some other time, maybe. 
I wanted something. Um, what? By the way, I don't understand where these books are. Wait a second. Uh, I'll talk with you another time, that mold, because I don't want to get... I, I see very interesting questions, but I need to give space to him a little bit and myself. Uh, do I have them in my inventory? He gave them to me? I'm so confused because I would like to buy some books, genuinely, uh, other books as well, because I need information, but... Where are you? I don't know, I don't know where to gather them. <laughs> because I didn't end up buying everything in Flotsam. The whole camp's gone berserk looking for the coins. Grown lads with their arses in the air. Scavenging around the tents like idiots. Where are these coins from if there wasn't a single one when they were pitching camp? I smell that. <laughs> you smell a mole? Hello? I am your humble servant. Alright then. Oh, the new guardians are gone. Do you have books? What do you know about the one wild hunt as well? I'll I'll ask them later. I'll ask them both later. Now I really need to talk to Roche. Okay, shut up. I really need to talk to Roche because uh, as soon as I loaded the game, of all the things that worry me, uh, I mean, we are doing this curse dispelling, and I'm fine because I. F I really feel like doing it because it's also part of being a witcher. But I'm really, I'm really not understanding why exactly we are in Hansel's camp. Uh, I have had time to process everything that happened. Um, I guess because Geralt just went straight to Hansel when the curse uh, activated. Uh, the problem is that we were already coming here with Roche and I really don't understand why because I'm having difficulties thinking that Hansel uh, um, and Deathmo don't know that we are the one that uh, that made their deal with Loredo fail basically. We botched their uh, efforts and I'm really really afraid <laughs> that uh, they are gonna use Geralt, especially. And then they're gonna kill us all. <laughs> or do pull something on us. Because I can't believe in all honesty that, that they no don't know that we did that. So, um, remember the spy that we were supposed to capture in Lorido's mansion? Well, I'm a little bit upset because that doesn't get mentioned in a cutscene or nowhere. Nothing, but yeah, that spy died under torture um, uh, because Roche has very delicate hands. Uh, sometimes I wonder how he got his job. Anyway, maybe it's better if it, if he died. Otherwise, what would have we done with him? I don't know. We would have had to kill him anyway. So technically, nobody reported back. Uh, to Cadwen. The letter for Death Mold was never sent because I found it. Uh, the one uh, Loredo was supposed to send, I think. Thing is, um, that I think they, I don't know why, but I feel like they know. And if they don't know, they will know. Uh, it's impossible. Uh, Sile could have said something as well because uh, talking about Sile, I, I cannot position her. I was kind of surprised that she knew that the Kingslayer was here because I cannot tell what was happening to her when uh, Triss disappeared. Sile left everything in Flotsam but she was gone supposedly. I thought she was with Lorido because she had something going on with Lorido, right? Uh, I remember when we spied on her and Lorido, I don't know what they were talking about, but it was something about Cadwen, maybe. I just don't know whether she was there when we assaulted Lorido or not. Because how does she know about Triss otherwise? We talked with um, her first when we came into the camp here. 
but supposedly she told Hansel uh, before we met Hansel that uh, the Kingslayer was around here. I don't know, maybe it's because she has her megascope with her somewhere and it's just not here, but I thought she left it there for some reason. It's very confusing uh, because I cannot place her and simply as that and I, I'm fine with it, <laughs> I'm going on. Um, I, I really need to talk to Roche because I don't understand why I'm here and honestly I feel anxious and uncomfortable about it. I wouldn't be here if I was Roche, uh, unless I was 100% sure that Hansel cannot know and doesn't know what we've done in Flotsam. Because we might have ruined his plans, big time. I read something about Saskia. Um, the journal talks about Saskia as if she's a piece of meat or something, which is understandable, but that also presents her almost like a pawn of somebody else. Um, it is said that there were many female heroines, you know, saints, anointed, whatever. Um, so I understand the reasoning in the journal about her being beautiful and uh, perfect, almost too perfect. When uh, Sabrina uh, incinerated the whole battlefield and she survived, and some people say that she's resistant to fire. Um, that's, uh, that could be part of her legend and stuff. It is weird though, I will not uh, conceal it. <laughs> and um, uh, unless she's a sorceress and none of us knows. Um, anyway, she's described as a tool, she's described as an object almost uh, by Dandelion. Um, you know, a female leader has to be, uh, and even sorceresses capitalize on beauty, so it's understandable, I'm not saying anything. But she's really presented like a pawn, almost as if she doesn't have a will of her own, or a character, or a spirit, or an attitude. She's just this thing that everybody looks up to, and she's beautiful, and she's a saint, and... Then I read about uh, Stannis, he's dead? I thought he was still alive, but apparently he's dead, but there is... I, I don't understand what happened, um, because the journal is not... I thought he was with Saskia and somewhere, but anyway, he wasn't very well received, not even by uh, his own nobles. They weren't okay with Stannis. But they were, they are not okay with Saskia either. But all the peasants and the non-humans are with Saskia for obvious reasons or less obvious reasons. I don't know. Yeah, I was asking myself: Is she, is Saskia human or elf? Because um, I, I could not see her, her ears. I would expect she's non-human. Um, but in the portrait that she has around here at camp, if that's her. Aldrin, Aldrin. Hear ye, hear ye. Let it be known far Aldrin. and wide Where that the you? woman known as Saskia, a rebel and troublemaker, is not of the human what kind. The she is an homunculus Aldrin. conceived Where by the sorceresses Philippa Eilhart and Sabrina Glevising. From Mandrake, Seaman and Brimstone in the belly of a man. As such, she Are is you an kidding me? Being, the enemy of men and gods. Um, this could be counter propaganda, but are you? I'm discussing this, and you just pop here and give me that. Hear ye, hear ye! His Royal Highness Henselt, King of Kedwin, Sovereign of Lawmark, etc., etc. Faced with the treacherous murder of his cousin, Demavet, his cousin? heard out the pleas of the fearful, orphaned, Adernian people, and takes Demavet's lands under his protection. Their cousins? In his righteous Aldrin, wrath, he swears to punish the troublemakers oppressing the people of this land, while embracing all the law-abiding people with his fatherly hand. Long live the king! Aldrin, Okay, guys, so 
I need to stay away from that guy because he's giving me Please overload as well. Hey, hi. Do you know Yennefer? You have it coming. Oh my god, stop it! Um, so, uh, and this was not in the journal or maybe I forgot about it. Hansen uh, is Damavain's cousin? Stannis is dead? Then... Uh, Hansen has a right to Edern? Actually. Or you should have. If Stannis is dead. Saskia is a pawn of Philippa and Sabrina. That wouldn't surprise me at all. But anyway, I was saying, I was asking myself whether Saskia was human because um, I would think she was an elf. Uh, you cannot see her ears, but in the portrait she has around here at camp, she's depicted with round ears. So she's human. Technically. Now at this point I don't believe anything anymore. It is uh, weird uh, that... Uh, um, I mean, Geralt went all over it like a five-year-old boy. Being like, oh, Jorvet likes her, blah blah blah. <laughs> but honestly, Jorvet would never like a human. Seriously. Can you see him? Because of slackening morale and the fouling of language. The following is announced. Stop it, Each please. evening officers will lecture the men nice. about a soldier's duty and cultural coexistence in the army. Attendance is mandatory. Great. Can can we stop like <laughs> I'm so <sighs> Audrey, where points. are you? What else am I to do? Yeah, yeah. This mess is yeah, driving yeah. me crazy. Audrey. Audrey. Audrey is missing. Saskia, a rebel and troublemaker. Audrey. Because you know, if Saskia is a is is really what that guy is saying she is, this would put the sorceresses in the position of being able to put pawns on the kingdoms they want. Because um, if Saskia wins against Hanselt and she gains control of Edir, and she's a pawn of the sorceresses, then sorceresses are ruling there. Oh, good lord. Uh, well, I'm going to Roche because... Uh, yeah, I, I can't. My brain is exploding. <laughs> um, also... Uh, hello? Leave me be, father! Leave you be! Your life's at stake! Why, your mother would have my head if anything happens to you! No! This is about my honor. And ply what mother does to you, I'll practice. I must prepare. Okay, everything is happening. I'm here talking. You're probably bored of hearing me talking. But let's go. I'll, I have discovered other things, but uh, let's... Uh, I, I will stop talking. Why didn't he turn out like his mum? Must my devilish blood course so quickly through his veins? Where's Roche? Roche, are you here? Why did he have to be like me? Stubborn imbecile. Oh god. He's here. He can't be anywhere else. He must Why be here. Did he have to be like me? Stubborn imbecile. Julian. Where are you, Roche? Now I have an, I'm having an anxiety. Because I already felt, I, I feel like he, it's not safe in here for us. 
especially him, not me. Audrin! Audrin, where are you? Because um, I, I can figure as a neutral Audrin, party, but not Roche. I mean, I can Audrin, handle the king place. maybe, Audrin, and I can make him a favor, but Roche can't do anything. Where are you? Audrin, here, boy. Audrin. This is really weird, Audrin. It sounds as if they're calling a cat or something. Here, boy. Where are you? Are you on the boat? I'm going to the boat, guys. I I need him immediately. Why would he disappear just like that? I think we can go down. Like hens on their eggs until this mist lifts. It won't just disappear. I think I can go down here maybe. Can I? Nope, I can't. How do I reach that boat? I go out here? No, so I was right when I was... Oh! I forgot to level. You know, the game is like, be relaxed, you're in Ansel Camp, do your quest, go monster hunting. And I'm like, we are all gonna die. <laughs> is that a dead body? Seriously, Roche? And I'm like, I need to talk to Roche because... We might be in danger. Audrin? Audrin! That's one of those things. I remember him. Uh, I, I met him in. I met him in. Um, do you want to fight? Ah, yeah. These are the rock things. And go away. Go away. Go away. Huh. While I'm doing a quest in the me oh god, not together, please. Maybe I can reach uh, the boat if I go past this. Good job. Come here. There we go. Wow. The weather, atmosphere, whatever just changed. Where do I go? Okay, come here. Fine. Come.
Him. I mean, what I'm expecting from Hansel and the reason why I am agitated is that I'm expecting him to pull a Walder Frey on me and he would be right. Wonder how many more will turn. I'm one of those people that uh, thinks that Walder Frey was right, actually. One of the few people in what he did. He had motive and reason. Because he was screwed big time by someone's decisions. <laughs> 